These are chemicals that are not good for the body. They are from combusting fuel. They can cause cancer. They can increase asthma. They can increase cardiovascular disease, stroke. For any person that's getting exposed to any PM 2.5, please start wearing a mask because those masks are very important to reduce the risks of those exposures to your lungs. I want to now talk a little bit about uh, air pollution just for a moment. Tell folks what, what's a PM 2.5 and why should, why should somebody care? Yeah, you know, 10 years ago, I didn't really understand all of the PM 2.5 jargon either. So I want to just make sure in all humility, this is something that we all need to learn now, every single one of us, even if we're in a research station in Antarctica, because air pollution unfortunately is rising. Um, we need to know that there are no boundaries. When wildfire smoke happens in Australia, it can circumnavigate the world within four days. And PM 2.5 is a way that we as a society have given a measure to air pollution, but it's not everything in air pollution. It's particulate matter. It's the particles in air pollution pollution that are 2.5 microns in size. Now you think, well, what in heaven's name is that? Like 2.5 microns, what does that mean to me? Well, if you think of like a little red blood cell, that's a micron. So you think about particles that are basically about twice the size of a red blood cell. And those are floating around in the air. And why do they do that? Well, that's because partially combusted fuel, combusted fuel from our cars, if you don't have an electric car, combusted fuel from industry. When it breaks up petroleum, when it breaks up any kind of product, wood fire as well, little particles escape into the air, and those particles are not what you see as soot on your car. They are not what you see as brown dust on your house. These are particles that are so small, they continue to be aerated, and they can float in the air around the whole world. And they're so small that they can penetrate into our lungs. And why do we care about that size, the 2.5 microns? That's because it can get through our lungs and into our blood. And it's dangerous also because PM 2.5, as a defined measure of air pollution, has about 200 different chemicals in it, 200. And of those 200, some of those are what we call volatile organic compounds. These are compounds that you smell when you smell like markers like xylene or in the old days, mothballs, naphthalene. So these are chemicals that are not good for the body. They are from combusting fuel. If any one of your listeners is a chemist, these are what we typically called six-membered rings. They're organic chemists, sort of nightmares because they smell horrible. And I didn't like them when I was doing organic chemistry when I was a student. I don't like them now because now I know what they can really do to your body. They can cause cancer, they can increase asthma, they can increase cardiovascular disease, stroke, and wildfire smoke is even more potent as an air pollutant than PM 2.5. We also measure PM 2.5 from wildfire smoke because wildfire smoke basically is biomass burning, but unfortunately wildfires aren't burning just trees anymore. They're also burning commercial buildings. So what goes up in wildfire smoke compared to, let's say, just diesel from the car, which is bad enough. But in addition, with wildfires, you're burning up your upholstery, you're burning up your paint thinners, you're burning up your detergents underneath your sink, your shampoos. That's all going up in the air. And that's also measured as PM 2.5 because all those particles are so small. They're also going into your lungs. So with wildfire smoke, we also have to be super careful. So for any person that's getting exposed to any PM 2.5, you can look on websites, you can go look at Air Now, you can go look at the NOAA website and know in your region what air quality index you have that day. If it's in the green zone, great. If it's in the yellow zone, please start wearing a mask, basically a mask that you used to wear in COVID because those masks are very important to reduce the risks of those exposures to your lungs, especially for children and elderly patients. So that's what PM 2.5 means. And I want people to really understand that it's measurable. It means something biologically that's important. It means something medically, but it also can be measured by well-meaning agencies like the EPA, like we use in California, something called Purple Air, and you can actually look on the web, the purple air monitors can actually tell you what PM 2.5 measurements are in the air. Not all countries have that. We're lucky in the US that our 
U.S. agencies measure PM2.5 on a regular basis so that we can map that to our zip codes. Yeah, because there's a lot of PM2.5 monitors that you can buy for your own home. Is it necessary or do you feel that if you are just looking at these databases, you get a good enough sense? Because I can't tell which problem they're solving for. Are they basically trying to say, you need to make sure you don't have particulate matter in your home because if you do... By the way, it might be that you have, you know, a leaking stove or, I mean, that would probably turn up as carbon monoxide or something else versus, no, you just need to know what the level is outdoors because that might be the day you choose not to do your 10 mile run if it's, you know, a a red day. All those things. So first of all, if you know that you have to be outdoors and you're an immigrant farm worker and you have to be out there for eight hours, no matter what, and the air quality index is a hundred, like it was yesterday here in California and we had people out in the fields, they should know that they should wear an N95 mask. An N95 will sufficiently prevent uh, PM 2.5s from getting in? Not perfectly, but at least it reduces the risk. No mask completely reduces those small organic molecules, those six-membered rings from getting through the mask, but at least it's better than nothing. So typically that's what I'll say. I'll, and I'll definitely say to my, to my patients, please don't exercise during any air quality index that's greater than, let's say, 50, because that can, even though they might not feel it during the hour that they exercise outside, it definitely affects their immune system. There were studies done in, uh, in London, for example, where people would exercise out in the streets that had a certain air quality index. And in London, you can actually do this because there's micro uh, PM 2.5 measurements in Hyde Park versus in Broad Street. So they did this research and they knew that even if people exercise out for one hour in clean air versus polluted air, their immune system changed for a whole day Mm. based on that one hour of exercise. So I would say be careful. And yes, Indoor air is very important. Our lives are spent indoors for more than 90% of them. That means 90% of the time that we're on this planet, we're spending it indoors. That's typical for the average U.S. citizen. So having a purple air monitor indoors is actually helpful, especially if you live in a place with lots of wildfire smoke or air pollution, because you can't assume that your air pollution is being filtered appropriately and you can't assume that you're being protected because oftentimes you can't smell this and you can't see it. It it is so small that you need a special detection monitor to know if it's there. Now, if you do have bad indoor air, you can buy a MERV filter. You can buy a filter in your air conditioning, your central air, or you buy a stand-up filter to reduce the exposure. So all these things are available to people And in certain states, they are available freely for families that can't afford them. So just to be clear, let's say you you do this exercise, you buy the purple filters, you figure out that, hey, actually, either, A, I live in in an area where there's enough pollution outdoors, and of course, it's easily able to get indoors through windows and doors, um, or just for whatever reason, there's something in the house that's producing these compounds. Um, Option one is you just get stand-up HEPA filters for the house, but you're saying option two is there are certain filters you can put in your HVAC that will do the same thing. And what are those called again? They're called MERV and they're MERV MERV 13 or higher. Don't buy a MERV 7 or 8. MERV 13 reduces all of the major PM 2.5, as well as pollens, as well as other chemicals. But you need to change them often because they're getting clogged up. So if you can buy, and it's not, I don't work for Purple Air, but you you can buy any of these monitors that can monitor external outside air and indoor air, and you can buy them and get to know the difference and how well you're, you know, it's good to ventilate your home. So you don't want your home to also, like you said, be collecting its own toxins. And that can happen if you have a gas stove, for example, so, or a wood stove. So yes, in general, knowing and measuring your PM 2.5 is going to be helpful to your health because you can manage accordingly. 